Good evening, Barbadians. The past three and a half years have been the highlight of the professional career of myself and my colleagues. Every day and in every way, we've tried our best to represent your interests and to remain dedicated to the service of the people of our country. You afforded us the opportunity in May of 2018 to serve you, and we will be forever grateful and indebted to you all. In 2015, when we began to rub shoulders with Barbadians from all walks of life through to the production of our covenant of hope, we sought to first understand your needs and wants as a people and to determine how best we could meet those desires. We further attempted to redefine who we were as a political organization, what we fundamentally stood for, what we would fight for on your behalf, and what we would never accept for the people of Barbados. These actions were all taken with one intent in mind, and that was to meet your development needs and to offer Barbadians the best in parliamentary and government representation. During the short period that the Barbados Labour Party has been in office, we have done all in our power to not only meet those needs, but to ensure that no Barbadian is ever left behind. We sought every day to do all in our power to ensure that in the fullness of time, we could indeed own our future. In 2018, we came to you seeking an opportunity to remedy whatever ailed Barbados. Our leader and our team pledged then, as we do now, that within a decade, this country could become the world's smallest fully developed nation. And today, and with all that we have been through together, we still stand by that assertion. I am proud to be a part of a team led by Prime Minister Motley at this critical juncture in our social and economic development evolution. The post-COVID-19 era will call for a complete reset of most of our government and governance structures. We must restructure our post-pandemic economy to ensure that no Barbadian family is ever left behind and to ensure that every single Barbadian household has a guaranteed income to further cement our food security and to ensure our rights to home ownership, our right to free education, our right to free health care. These are now the rights and entitlements that Barbadians from all walks of life have earned and the Barbados Labour Party will ensure that these rights are defended at all costs. This is why leadership matters. Strong, decisive, purposeful leadership. The kind which Prime Minister Motley and our team have provided for you since the day that we took office. The type of leadership that is tried and tested and that has already corrected the path that we were on under the Democratic Labour Party administration and that has turned our social and our economic fortunes around in just three and a half years. No other leader in this election can claim the same. And yes, leadership does matter. The leaders of the other two major political parties in the upcoming election lead political organizations that are in disarray. They are both fighting for their own political survival and are not supported by the majority of those that make up the rank and file of their parties. I am proud to say that in the Barbados Labour Party, we know who our leader is and the entire Barbados Labour Party team stands alongside Prime Minister Motley and supports her as leader. The Barbados Labour Party's fundamental strength is our superiority in terms of leadership, our ability to deliver in the most challenging of times, our experience in government and our technical skill and competence because leadership matters. And we are asking you therefore to stay the course for a newly transformed post-pandemic economy as we rebuild our beloved Barbados, shape our new republic and pay forward for our youth and for Barbadians of future generations. We now want to take you on a journey into the future, a future that we must own. If every Barbadian is to achieve his or her full human development potential, and if Barbados is to become that fully developed small state of which I just spoke. Let's therefore have a conversation about our future. There are three pillars on which ancestors for hundreds of years have built this country. And contrary to popular and widespread belief, the first of these is our entrepreneurial spirit. The second is our empowerment through our commitment to education and to health. 
And a perfect example of this is the fact that despite our challenges with NCDs, Barbados has one of the highest ratios of centenarians in the world. The third pillar in this trio is enfranchisement through ownership. And it is on this third point of enfranchisement through ownership that I will focus my attention this evening as we continue on this journey into owning our future. You and I both know that it's every Barbadian's dream to own a piece of the rock. Not true? We have delivered on our 2018 mission critical projects as outlined in our manifesto. Because you placed your confidence in us, we will also deliver on this major transformational project in the next five years. As we did when we promised 30,000 jobs and record employment levels in this country, and we fulfilled that promise, we will do it again. What you are about to witness and to be a part of in Barbados over the next five years is a level of prosperity never seen before. Stay the course with the Barbados Labour Party. In just five years, it is our intention to deliver 10,000 new homes to Barbadians. And let me explain this. To put things in perspective, there is no single developed country on this planet that has not used construction as a major means of kick-starting its economic development. And we are, of course, accustomed to large infrastructural projects like buildings, highways, and ports. This time, however, in addition to these infrastructural upgrades as a means of jump-starting further social and economic development, we will be focusing on housing. The housing sector is a complete ecosystem in itself. This sector will initially bring hundreds of jobs in construction, landscaping, fencing, tiling, painting, and furnishing. I'm sure you get the picture. And we all know how proud we are of our homes. We will encourage and incentivize you to decorate your homes with local art and craft. This is not new for us. Almost all Beijing homes have always had some sort of art hanging, something on the walls that denotes a Barbados of the past and of the present. And we will constantly and consistently encourage you to support our local artists to stimulate that sector as well. Can you imagine what will happen if each homeowner in Barbados was committed to purchasing just one piece of local art? That's 10,000 pieces. What if you purchase two pieces? That's 20,000 works of art. So my friends, I hope you are starting to see the new vision that we have for Barbados. 10,000 homes will house 40,000 to 50,000 Barbadians. Imagine all the windows that will be made, the decorations that will adorn those windows, and there again, more jobs being created. We will be encouraging each homeowner to plant fruit trees as a major step in beautifying their homes. Beautiful, well-appointed gardens will also form part and parcel of this landscaping upgrade. Once again, more jobs. And construction workers have to be fed mm -hmm. on site. So imagine all the food and meal providers and the new businesses that will emerge simply to cater to this sector. More jobs. Our commitment to 10,000 new homes has been carefully thought out, not only to complete the process of enfranchisement, but also to recharge and refuel our economy as we move forward with the country's post-COVID economic reconstruction. Let's therefore journey together in this new era of reconstruction. The next important component of this ecosystem, as I am referring to it, is the role that housing and new housing development will play in generating new wealth. How many of you are aware that within the next decade, we will see the largest transfer of wealth in Barbados in a generation. The homeowners of the late 70s, 80s, and 90s will be passing on their properties to their children and grandchildren. This is critically important. And our data shows that approximately 75,000 persons will be in line for this inheritance. What does this mean for us? This means that children and grandchildren of these homeowners will now not have to start from zero. They will have an established platform upon which to build. And this, my friends, is the secret 
to intergenerational wealth. As you pass house and land from seed to seed, or as our grandparents used to say, in other words, from generation to generation, it becomes easier for each subsequent generation because the ones coming before already had the necessary head start. When we add all of this to the 10,000 new homes, imagine what kind of Barbados we will have in the future. My friends, on Wednesday the 19th of January, 2022, I am therefore asking you to vote for the Barbados Labour Party and to work hand in hand with us in this era of reconstruction, a new era of prosperity, a renewed entrepreneurial spirit, a new era of enfranchisement, and a new era of wealth and empowerment. This is our vision for the future, that time ahead which we must all own. We must own our future existence and we must pursue that ownership together. We must go after it with the same zeal and commitment that brought our forefathers through the vagaries of slavery and colonialism and establish that firm platform for the future development of our nation. If we are to truly free ourselves from the physical and mental shackles that once held us back, the visionless, hopeless existence that the Democratic Labour Party had very recently created for us, then you must stay the course with this Barbados Labour Party. We must never, however, forget that dark period of the lost decade of our development, those years between 2008 and 2018 that former Prime Minister Stewart described recently as glorious. They certainly were not for the thousands of Barbadians that lost their homes, their businesses, their jobs, and their hope of a better life in the land of their birth. The statement of a glorious time was not at all laughable. It was offensive to all Barbadians. Barbadians had already litigated that case and Stuart and his team were weighed in the balance of justice and found wanting. To reopen and to pour salt into those wounds is nothing short of galling and prop improper. Under the Democratic Labour Party, our country had plunged to such depths that our major visitor source markets were issuing travel advisories because raw sewage was literally flowing in the streets of our dear land. The international credit rating agencies had downgraded Barbados's economy some 23 times, and our national debt instruments had been given junk bond status. Our currency value was at risk, and we had a mere four weeks of our foreign reserves at our central bank. The Democratic Labour Party, for the second time since independence, had taken us to the brink of social and economic disaster. At that time, we asked for and you gave us the overwhelming mandate to rescue Barbados from the depths of despair and the loss of hope that had been inflicted on us by the Democratic Labour Party. Mm -hmm. And with all of the headwinds that have been blowing against us, we have delivered. New buses on our streets for our daily commuters, new garbage trucks for a consistent program of solid waste collection and disposal, running water now available in rural communities that had endured years without access to consistent, clean water, a revamped and upgraded health care system, reduced crime, and we have substantially increased our foreign reserves and saved our dollar. Most important, however, we have engendered a renewed confidence in our people to how they view government and governance. And the most egregious act and situation that my team and I inherited, nonetheless, was the fact that a Democratic Labour Party that used to boast of the Right Honourable Errol Barra's legacy of free education would have taken the policy decision to eliminate free tertiary education at the University of the West Indies. In the process, the Frondella stewart led administration would also have disenfranchised thousands upon thousands of Barbadians by denying them the opportunity to a free tertiary education, including the Barbados Community College and the Samuel Jackman Prescott Institute of Technology. Education and training, which many of them had personally received. Student enrollment 
at the University of the West Indies fell by over 50%, forcing young Barbadians and their families to have to pay tuition fees. Many students had to put their studies on hold. Many of our scholars withdrew from the classroom. And today, although our administration has restored tuition-free studies at the University of West Indies, there are still hundreds of students who have not returned to the classroom. These individuals still feel hurt, disillusioned, and betrayed by that visionless and uncaring government. I am pleased to report that the global prominence that we once enjoyed has been restored. We have established never before seen diplomatic and commercial relationships with three major countries on the African continent. These actions have opened up the door for more purposeful and structured relationships with these countries. The tangible benefits that are already starting to accrue from these more substantive arrangements are being played out in the freer and more frequent movement of people, goods, and services. These actions are sure to redound to the benefit of all Barbadians and indeed all of CARICOM. These decisions and actions should also give rise to a sense of pride and a belonging in being of African descent, as are most of our population. It should also give rise to a deeper understanding that there are other parts of the world with which we can effectively trade. We are not bound solely to our northern neighbors and our traditional western partners and suppliers. Arguably, our most important achievement to date, however, has been our ability to establish a more prominent space for small island state discussion and recognition in the global arena. The majority of the world's developed states had hitherto not readily recognized the true worth of small states in a global social and economic environment that was being substantially reordered. Our presence and discussions at Global Fora has created an environment for greater recognition of our worth, our value, and our potential to contribute to that global reordering. Actions that should create a more equitable and a fairer world for us and for the generations that follow us to live in. A world where resources are shared more readily and fairly and where all human potential is fully recognized and realized. A world in which we are all protected, cared for, and nourished. And I'm proud to report that Barbados is leading this fight. I'm proud that the Prime Minister Motley has been able to champion this cause on our behalf. We are immensely proud of all Barbadians and are humbled to have been your representatives over the past three and a half years. And on the 19th of January, I therefore ask Barbadians to get out and vote. Get out and vote for the Barbados Labour Party. Get out and vote for the government that you want to lead this country and to manage the affairs of our people. Good night and God bless you all.